Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my basement. I'm Francisco Suarez, your host, and this is from Suarez Basement. How are all those masses of your own destiny doing? Are you guys, you know, moving in the right direction to get to the destination? Well, that is the question, right? If you're new, welcome. Seriously, thank you for tuning in and for becoming part of our family. This is a podcast created for everybody out there who is interested in the communication, media, and the arts. And I want to remind you, we have a new place. Yes, a new home in the internet. You can visit us now in www.fsbasement.com where you can get actually access to the entire library of our episodes in audio and in video. But also we have created really cool educational tools that you can use. Again, don't forget, just go and visit us in the internet. Hey, you know, we have a lot of actors that come and, and talk to us. And I remember a lot of them uh, express the importance of custom design and character development. In fact, they say that it's only until they try their custom for the first time that they really become fully into character, that they can really understand the character. And again, I'm not an actor. I wish I could, but I'm really horrible acting. So I, I prefer not, not, not to even try. But I do remember when I was a kid that it was until I was able to dress up as a policeman, a doctor, a cowboy, that I was able to come fully into character. I used to play El Zorro a lot. I know that actually Joe I am, but I was one of my favorite TV shows and I have this Zorro costume and oh my God, as soon as I put that costume in, I was able to really feel that I was that character. And if it's somebody out there who has mastered that intimate relationship between costume design, character develop and visual storytelling is our guest today. In fact, some of her costumes are so iconic that I'm sure you have wear some of her costume for Halloween sometime. I know at least for me twice, I've been dressed up in one of her uh, costume <laughs> designs. I'm very happy, very humble, very honored. I'm very excited to have with us Jenny Timmin, which is a costume designer for movies such as Harry Potter, Skyfall, James Bond franchise, Gravity, The Black Widow, Judy, you name it. She has an extensive work, excellent work. In fact, she's waiting to connect with us from London when she is now working with the director Alfonso Curon in his latest project. They have worked together before in Gravity and of course in Harry Potter. So this is going to be an excellent and a great episode from Suarez Spaceman. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, WCNY, for being a partner of our show. Let's start this new show from Suarez Basement right away. Here we go. First question is, if we can travel in time and think about your childhood in Paris, I understand you born and grew up in Paris. When I was born in Paris, but I grew up in Paris. You grew up in Paris. When was the time as a child that you realized you want to be involved in visual storytelling, in fashion, and in costume design? All the time. From the beginning on, I was playing with my doll. I was making clothes for my doll. I was putting them in little scenes. I always wanted to do it. It's really an early vocation. So you knew right from the beginning, that's where I want to, to go. How difficult was for you to get to that point where you are now in the sense of that process? It wasn't, of wasn't that difficult, I think. Um, I went to university, I studied old languages. Then after that, when I finished, I did the Ecole du Loup for art history. And then at the same time, and then when I had a master, I started in El Magazine. As a, as a trainee, uh, started in fashion first, and then after that I went into film. So it was, it was, I'm not saying it was easy, it was not easy, but it was pretty straightforward. But and maybe it was at a time, it was in the late, uh, it was beginning 70, and I think at that time the world was open. But I think that now uh, it's so much work nowadays when somebody wants to do it, they can. It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit, I know these questions will sound a little uh, silly, but if you can define in your own words, what a 
custom designer work is and how important is the process of storytelling and custom design? What would be that definition? When it's created, it's giving a visual shape to a story via the costume of that the character are wearing. Okay, very good, very good. So let's talk about your work, which is, of course, amazing. Uh, let's talk about Judy, the movie, uh, the famous uh, icon, Judy Garden. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, dedicate this question to my good friend, Michael Mancini, who is a big fan of Judy Garden. Um, so I understand, and I read a, an article in CR Fashion Book that, you know, one of the challenge production has is that we couldn't use we I put myself into the into the uh, we couldn't use the the actual costumes and design from Judy Garden because of copyright issues. Tell me a little okay. bit about that process and how you know were you able then to bring to life a, an iconic uh, fashion icon like Judy it Garden? More, it was more um, from the script and from the song. We started with the song. The, the, the director um, and I were made a list of a song that she was going to sing. And from that moment on, I showed him um, costumes which were worn by Judy Garland in similar situation. And we picked up uh, 10 of the iconic pieces that who style was born by Judy Garland. And from there, that point on, I designed the, the costume that were going to be used in the film. So the real pieces of Judy, Judy Garland were an inspiration for the design. Even the wedding dress, because of copyright, couldn't use a wedding dress. So I had to design something um, which was style of. So out of everything that she wore in her life, we picked up, uh, I picked up the pieces which I thought will be the best to illustrate the song that René was going to sing in the context of the story that the director wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit time frame from the moment, for example, in Judy, that you received the script to the moment that those dresses were all done. Well, it was, we had no money at all. <laughs> really? No, no, it was a film with a very small budget. So we did not have, I had a lot of time to think. I, I could take time to think because I was working on another film. But from the moment that I really started to the moment we were shooting, we had four, five months of prep. Five, four months of prep, which is not too much because it was a hell of a lot of job. And I was on my own. I had almost no team for the first two months. So I was really alone mm. doing it but I really loved it so much and I, I have a very good relationship with René Selvey who started when I was doing with her Bridget Jones so that's a long 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 time ago so um, it was a pleasure designing for her it is a beautiful I mean the, the costumes are magnificent and it really is a, it, you can it translate in the screen which is what you want how it translate costumes into the screen what I'm saying is you know, you, we can't say, oh, my God, this, this is a beautiful dress. However, when you put it in the screen, not necessarily translate in the same way. Is that happen uh, where you have something in a mind? Costume, a costume, a fashion is something that you sell. You do fashion in shop because you have to sell it. While costume is something that you wear on, on a theater, television or film. And it has an artistic value. Uh, because it's worn by an actor to play a part. It's not worn by Mrs. Smith uh, to go to a, uh, to go to work. <laughs> it's a different thing. Yeah, open, yeah, that makes sense. It, it doesn't mean that it doesn't carry a story. When, when you when you buy something in a shop, it also carry a story, but it does not have the same commercial impact that the costume have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And let's talk about your relationship. I mean, for example, you have worked with Alfonso Cuaron uh, many times in Gravity. I'm still now working with Alfonso Cuaron and at 5.30, I'm doing that now with Siri. I'm working with him now. But that's awesome. Uh, are you working? Can I, can I know what project are you working on? I am doing a television series with him for Apple TV called Augustus. Okay. Uh, it is a uh, seven 
part. Uh, um, incredible, incredible story with a brilliant cast with uh, Kate Blanchett and um, Sacha Baron Cohen and Cody mm. and uh, great, but and Kevin. Um, I mean, incredible, incredible. Um, she's so beautiful. Let me get you, Kate. Uh, um, Kevin, Kevin Klein, Kevin mm. Klein. It's, it's, it's an incredible cast. It's when is coming? Class. When is coming out? Oh, I know. I think next year or sometime. Next, I next, know. next we are, year. We'll be shooting till uh, till I think January, but it's very long. So uh, that's why I, I'm at the moment working, and at by thirty, I have got some screen tests. We have great GOP, we have Chivo, and we have Bueno de Bonel, and we have. I mean, it's incredible. It's really that's, that's it, fantastic. Tell me a little bit that relationship with the director as a costume designer, because I think I, I mean it must be a very intimate, very very oh, yes. open communication. I mean, Alfonso and I is twenty years that we work together, so it's very intimate. So we are like an old couple. Um, it depends. Depends. You know, every relationship with every every director is different. You have director with whom you are very close, because um, but you always develop a sort of close relationship. But it depends on the personality of the director. Some people give you more on the personal level than other one. Some director is just as a personal relationship, and with other one, it is become more of a friendship. It all depends on the, you know, it's like in every single world, your people with whom you. But it's it it is the time that you work with them, it is close, because you have to understand what their deepest secrets and wishes are, which mm. sometimes they cannot express themselves. You mm. have to be a little bit. Then you have to a little bit of a witch and guess what they want to say. And they also sometimes expect you, most of the time they expect you to tell them what they want, to show them visually what they want. Also to push the boundary, because I think that you also should show something that they might not expect to see. Even if it is to say no, I shouldn't be afraid to have somebody telling no, I don't like it. Because sometimes you learn a lot for something that you reject. And it's always good that you don't to know that you don't like something because it makes you feel I would like something else. And it gives you a different idea about the character that you want to paint. Mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. I mean, every character mm -hmm. has lots of set, And I always say that you make a film when you are shooting it. Never before the film has its own, the film or the television series or has, has its own life and developed by itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, always, that's the most wonderful thing to, to, to see. That, that's why it's so interesting to be during a shoot because you see something happening which is bigger than you thought would be or develop his own, it has his own life. Yeah, the, 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 the creation is his own life, like a monster coming. <laughs> Well, I love it. I think that you, I can see your eyes light up when it's all about the magic of make believe, right? I think that's yes. where I'm so in love with visual storytelling. And the costume is, is for me a key, key factor in that make believe. Yeah, I, I, but you know, I, I don't like, I don't like costume for the sake of costume. I am never, I never have been a sort of, of a, maybe that's why I don't have too many awards because I never do a costume for the costume. I do a costume for the character. It's very easy in my job to, to work on effect because you get awards with the effect. You know, when you do costumes which are very special or very big or very, then people see them. But I think that's not what I really like. I, I just like to be to make a costume which will be a prolongation of the part and will help an actor to become that character. And, and of course you need, you have a huge aesthetic element on it, but I think that the dramatic element for me is more important than mm -hmm. the aesthetic element. Which you make me, bring me to my next question because it's the relationship between the costume, the character and the actor. I, I, I hear a lot of actors that say, I, you know, I rehearsal, I, I know my lines, I understand the character, but it's only until I put 
the costume that for me that connection oh, with yeah. the character oh. come to life. Of course, of course. I mean, I'm working now with Sacha Baron Cohen and he has to play a posh man and, and a posh English man. And the, the fact that he was wearing those clothes, he started, he said it was so important for him to speak differently, to behave differently, to walk differently. And they need all the help that they can. And I think that the costume is a huge part of their character, of this character. Right. Well, it's like playing when I was a kid, I used to like to play you know, an astronaut, or I used to like to be the Zorro, you know, the famous. It wasn't until I put a costume that I was like, oh, now I am. There <laughs> you are. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you become, you, be, you become the character. It's the, same, it's the same in normal life. You wear something different when you go to see your first love, and you wear something different when you go to a job interview. So it's exactly the same. Right. It's exactly the same. Quick question. Can you become a good costume designer if you are not a good drawer is those two things go hand to hand no you don't have to be we have illustrator if you we have always illustrator which are working when the production demands it um, mostly when you do an historical production and you have to have lots of made then you need an illustrator but everybody can design basically to make themselves understood in mean, our business. But if you want something very beautiful, then we have costume illustrator, which can make it better because it's their job. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, but it's just, it's just for the look because actually, you know, everybody can design a dress or something with the, you have the fabric, you have, it's, designing is not that difficult, but create a beautiful illustration, then it is a separate job. Is a different thing. And just to wrap up, what do you would say to a lot of students out there that want to pursue this career in costume design? They're very passionate about it. They understand the importance of costume design in visual storytelling. What is something that you would like them to know uh, in order for them to keep moving forward? I should say, just do it. Do it. Uh, start. Start with student film, start with small film, start with school project, but just do it. Do it, do it. Because it says, especially nowadays with so many streaming uh, channels, you, it's so much work and, it, and just do it, you know. I mean, if you really believe in it, you, you will make it. It's not more difficult to become a lawyer than to become a costume designer. You see, it's not. It's the same. It's the same. It takes you, it takes you five to six years. When you are really good, it takes you a lot longer. If you are not that good, but you will always arrive. You will always make it. You will always being able to work in costume if you, if you are, if you like it enough and if you believe in it. Mm. But I really don't think that is impossible. It's just hard work. And Jenny, how do you feel when you see some of your costumes? I mean, you design some of the most iconic costumes that, you know, uh, I probably wear some of your costumes mean in Halloween here, right? We, we all dress up in... I love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's really great, you know. I was... I was um, I think it's great that people interpret by themselves what you have been designing. I was I was at a, at a, I don't know the twenty years of Harry Potter in Orlando, and I saw people interpreting my, my costumes, and I, I had to judge them. And I thought they were so clever in the way they were doing it. They were really clever. And it was it was some time. I, I mean, I had I had this woman was dressed up as an armchair. And no, no, she was she was being the, 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 the professor with the armchair in front of her. She had done the pyjama with the armchair. I thought it was so clever. I said, <laughs> great, you are you are making a costume with the special effects in the same time. It's great, it's great. I, I love it, I love it. I, it. I think that that it is exactly why we are working for, to to allow people to to follow their dream and, and believe in them and to just give them a good time and then if their good time is to become that character and make themselves the costume, why not? You know, I, I had when I was doing um, uh, 
uh, Black Widow, I had so many girls sending me pictures of them in scarlet costume in white. And I thought they were doing a brilliant job. I was saying, this is good. Put the seam a little bit higher, put that, put that. And they were doing it. I thought, great, great. You know, I, I, I'm just, I just enjoy it a lot. Of course you enjoy it. I, I, I mean, it's awesome. It's fantastic. And just to, to finish, what are you looking in a candidate? What are you looking if somebody have the fortune to work with you, to come to work with you? I, I ask this question because I want to be sure that everybody that is listening understand what are the qualifications that somebody like you is looking in an apprentice and somebody who's going to come and learn the craftsman and work in the industry? First, humility, <laughs> because it seems to be, um, you have to be humble to understand that you will have to learn and work really hard. Second, fantasy. I think that it's very good to have people who have their idea and want to go just a little bit above, even if it is a wrong idea. I like to have people to me, I always say, why did you do that? Why did you buy that shirt? They said, because I said, explain me. There must be an ID behind. What do you want that guy to be? What you want? And then the third quality um, looking for into it is the love for cinema and theater. There are too many people now in that young generation who don't know anything. We don't have any cinema or theater culture because they are kids of computer and they don't know anything about cinema and theater and they don't have the references which are needed. And that I find a little bit, I find a little bit of a pity because if, it, if you don't have the reference, you won't be able to go beyond that, you know, because you are not working for costume. If not, we will all work for Madame Tussaud. We work for film. So we need to have a minimum. So I, I'm asking always for a minimum of culture. Whatever it is, theater. Somebody now, I have an assistant, she's crazy about theater. She's everything in theater or musical. Doesn't matter. She's used to idea. She's used to interpret a drama visually. She understands that. She understands the opposition of color, of shape, uh, the signification of it. I think it's very important to have people with a minimum of cinematographic or theater culture. Jenny, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I mean, truly, truly thank you for your time. I mean, again, because I know how busy you are, just to take 25 minutes of your time means the world to me and it means the world, of course, to the students who are going to be listening and are going to be watching this podcast. Thank you. Good bye luck bye. with, the, with, good luck with everything. Bye-bye. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.